Welcome back everyone, Dan Vega here, back with another tutorial, and today we're talking about Spring Boot and Spring Data JPA, and more specifically, I've actually had a few students come across the same problem, so I thought I would take a chance and go ahead and address it here. And really it has to do with um, students going ahead and creating packages and then putting classes in there that are marked with at entity and those entities uh, those tables are not getting created in their database and they're trying to figure out why so I'm going to create a quick project here and actually walk through the problem scenario and then we'll take a look at a couple different ways that we can go ahead and solve it so I'm going to fire up IntelliJ here we're going to create a new project and we're going to use 1.8 Java 8 here we're going to use the spring initializer Create next, let's just call this entity demo. We're gonna use a jar, 1.8, Java, say com vega. that is my base package. And we'll just go ahead and hit next. So we're running on Spring Boot version 1.4, but if you're using 1.3 something, um, that's probably gonna be the same any, uh, either way. So what we're doing here is we're actually gonna create a web project. It's going to use JPA, we need JPA because um, that's going to give us Spring Data JPA, including Spring Orm and Hibernate. And we're just going to use H2 uh, to get that uh, embedded database. We're just going to click Next. Uh, we need to put this in a folder. I'm putting it in a boot folder in something called Entity Demo. And that's all we really need to do. Uh, so we'll go ahead and click Finish. We're going to create the project. And we're going to create a very, very simple project here just to keep it simple. So we can kind of see what the project is, or see what the problem is. So when I open up this project, if we look in the POM, again, we're using 1.4, we're using Java 8. Uh, really all we have here is Spring uh, Boot Starter Data JPA to get in all of that stuff. And we have the starter web to get in that stuff. And then we're using uh, H2 database. So very simple application. If I jump into source and main, and resources. I'm gonna do something in here real quick. I can never remember these properties, so it's really nice to have this assist here. But basically, I wanna turn this on so I make sure I can hit that um, H2 console so I can see my tables. So now that that's on, that's all we're gonna need here. Inside of Java, I have my main package class and I have my main application class here. And all I'm gonna do is create a new package called domain and inside domain I'm going to create a new Java class and let's just call this tweet and we'll say that we're building a tweet class here so let's say this is an entity and let's say I have a long ID we'll say this is an ID and at generated value and then we just have a couple properties we have who posted it and let's say what the text was um, then we need a quick private constructor for this, so we'll say that, and then let's go ahead and generate those getters and setters, and we'll say okay. So this is just a standard entity class, uh, we just have a few properties in here, and we should be good to go. So what we're going to do is uh, actually go back to our um, application class, and we're going to fire this up. Uh, at this point, we should be able to, this is all we really need uh, for Hibernate to kick in, see our entity, and actually write out uh, and create those tables for us. So we should be able to open the H2 console, which gives us some insight into the database, and we should be able to see that tweet class, or tweet table, forgive me. So let's jump in there. I'm going to fire up 8080. There's no route, so we expect to get that. I'm going to say h2-console, and we're going to connect and we don't see our tweet table. And so this is the problem a couple of students have come across and they're just not quite sure of what's happening here. So we're gonna actually look at this. So what's happening here is the uh, main application class is in the package com.therealdanvega. If we were to go ahead and create a package inside of this class and move our tweet class inside of there, this would actually work um, because Spring needs to know where to find um, different uh, different uh, aspects in our in our application. Things like controllers, things like services, and even things like entities. 
it doesn't know where else to look unless you tell it. So by default, it's only going to scan the base package and anything below it. So in this case, again, this is the base package of where our main application class is. So if we move that tweet into the domain package, everything would work. But because the student was creating a package outside of the main class, that's why you're coming across this problem. But if it is outside the main class, there is actually a way to tell Spring where those entities are. So if we come back to our main application and use entity, whoops, entity scan, and all we need to do is say, hey, this is where our base packages are. So all we're going to say is domain. And so now that's telling it, hey, when you're looking to scan for entities, this is where I want you to scan because it couldn't find them under here, but now we've kind of told them where it was. So if we had a completely different package, like all the way down, like com.ab.c.d.domain, then we could find them there. So now let's go ahead and restart this. So I'm going to stop and run. And now with this entity scan in our main application, uh, we should be able to jump into the H2 console and see that tweet table created for us. There we go. And we'll jump here and connect. And there's our tweet table. So that was the problem with that. Again, if you want to move the, the domain classes outside of the base package, that is completely fine. What I would probably suggest though, I end up creating sub packages underneath my main package for everything. So I'll have something like controller, then I'll have another package for say my service classes, etc. So my suggestion would be to go ahead and move this guy right up here, refactor, and then get, you don't need this anymore because you're underneath the main package where, uh, where your main application class is. So that is that. Um, I hope that cleared up some things for anybody else running into that same issue. If you found this useful, please give me a thumbs up. Uh, go ahead and subscribe and let me know if you have any other questions about your Spring applications. Thanks for watching and have a good one.